Hello, my YouTube family. I hope you all had a blessed day. The aim of this program is to make you aware of the types of contributions made by black people throughout our history. So many books have been written by the winners of wars depicting their stories. I think it is time for our story to be told. I encourage all of you to research for yourselves and learn the true history of our people. Teachers, you can use these videos to teach lessons in your black history class. Students, when you're thinking about doing a report for Black History Month, come to our channel, go through the library of videos, and pick one of the people that we highlight. Out of the millions of potential subscribers, we just want to reach one so each one can teach one. Let's get familiar. <laughs> In today's episode, we take a look at another brilliant man by the name of Edward Alexander Boucher. He was an African-American physicist and scholar, and the first African-American to acquire a PhD from an American institution. Unlike anyone else in the U.S. who earned a PhD at that time, and for the next 80 years, Boucher was unable to obtain a college or university position. He was born in New Haven, Connecticut on the 15th of September, 1852. His parents, Susan and William, were both of African descent. He joined one of the three schools in New Haven that admitted black students. His teacher nurtured his academic abilities until he joined New Haven High School in 1866. In 1868, Boucher was accepted into Hopkins Grammar School, a private institution that prepared young men for the classical and scientific departments at Yale College. He graduated first in his class at Hopkins. Edward entered Yale College in 1870. Four years later, when he was the first black to be graduated from Yale in 1874, he ranked six in a class of 124. On the basis of this exceptional performance, Boucher became the first black in the nation to be nominated to Phi Beta Kappa, but he was not elected at that time. Between 1902 and 1916, Boucher held five or six positions in different parts of the county. Until November 1903, he taught math and physics in St. Louis at Summer High School, the first high school for blacks west of the Mississippi. He then spent seven months as the business manager for the Provident Hospital in St. Louis, November 1903 to May 1904, followed by a term as the United States Inspector of Customs at the Louisiana Purchase Exposition held in St. Louis, June 1904 to October 1906. In October 1906, Boucher secured a teaching and administrative position at St. Paul's Normal and Industrial School, later renamed St. Paul's College in Lawrenceville, Virginia. In 1908, he became principal of Lincoln High School of Gallipolis, Ohio, where he remained until 1913 when an attack of arteriosclerosis compelled him to resign and return to New Haven. Undocumented information has Boucher returning to teaching at Bishop College in Marshall, Texas, but illness once again forced him to retire in 1916. He returned to New Haven where he died in his boyhood home at 94 Bradley Street. He had never married or had children. Boucher's full impact on black education will never be known. That he had an impact is undeniable. Lillian Mitchell Allen remembered Boucher from her childhood days in Gallipolis. Perhaps the most highly educated person in the area, he inspired both black and white young people with unknown goals, she said, noting that her brother, Jay Mitchell, who graduated from Bowdoin College in 1913 and became the first black faculty member of Ohio State University was influenced by Boucher. Here are some interesting facts about Edward Alexander Boucher. Edward Alexander Boucher died on October 28, 1918, aged 66, in his childhood home in New Haven, Connecticut after a short illness. The Edward Boucher 
Abdus Salam Institute was founded, and in 2005, Howard University and Yale established the Edward A. Boucher Graduate Honor Society. He spent 26 years teaching physics and chemistry until his resignation in 1902. Even after completing bachelor's and doctorate degrees, he still could not secure employment because of his African ancestry. Boucher submitted a dissertation on measuring refracting indices during his doctoral studies. After graduating in 1874, he decided to extend his studies for two years by completing a PhD. Boucher wrote a short autobiographical piece for the Yale publication, Class Record, 1912. Next week, Monday, we will continue to spotlight contributions made by black people throughout history. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this valuable information with your loved ones. Click the notification bell so you will be notified when we upload new videos. Find The Awakening Frequency on Twitter and Instagram, and also Facebook. Again, researching is key. Always do your own research and never just listen to what people tell you. We are The Awakening Frequency. Out of the millions of potential subscribers, we just want to reach one so each one can teach one. Peace.